We're here with Genevieve Abdo, who is here on the Distinguished American Speakers Program. Um, maybe, Genevieve, you could tell us a little bit about your program, what you've been doing here in Israel. Well, I've been basically talking about three topics, uh, Iran and uh, the Iran-U.S.-Israeli relationship, and as well as Muslims in America, and also um, about what we call political Islam, okay. about the Islamic movement in Egypt this man by the name of Hamza Yusuf. And I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him, but he's, they call him Sheikh Hamza. He's not, uh, in, in terms of his religion, religious scholarship, he shouldn't be called a Sheikh, but he did study informally for 10 years in the Persian Gulf. And he studied with a lot of religious scholars in the Persian Gulf. And as you can see, he's a convert. He actually was raised as a Greek Orthodox in California. And the reason that I, I, I basically say that he is one face of uh, Islam in America is that there are more and more converts in the United States converting to Islam, um, which is, again, a very sort of unusual phenomenon. You wouldn't expect that. But he founded uh, an institute outside of San Francisco called the Zaytuna Institute. And it was founded 10 years ago. And he... Um, he founded this institute with a, a, a very specific purpose, and that was that he believed that um, after being in the Gulf, that Muslims were being misguided by a lot of the religious scholars in the Middle East, and that that was the reason that they were becoming radicalized. And then um, on the topic of Muslims in America, um, I'm just basically trying to give people some idea here of uh, the, the population of Muslims in the United States, which is about six million, to try to let them know that uh, in some ways Muslim life in America has some parallels to life among Muslims elsewhere, um, and that the community is becoming more religious, and also trying to give people some idea of how life for Muslims has changed in the United States after 9-11 because that's of concern to Muslims in America, and I think it's of interest to people here in the region because um, you know, they have their own views of the United States. So I think it's interesting for them to wonder how, given their own somewhat negative views, we have to be honest, <laughs> their negative views, um, how can six million Muslims live in the United States in a country that they perceive to be sort of at war with Islam? And so um, I'm just trying to give them some idea of paint a portrait of the community, uh, show them, for example, that Muslims in America are actually very affluent, that they're very well educated, and so the perceptions they might have or the assumptions they might have that Muslims have a bad life in the United States, that those assumptions aren't necessarily true. The community is very, very diverse. And I think that this is also one reason that um, there is, to some degree, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't emphasize this too much, but I think that, that the potential for radicalization probably increases when you have, say, in the situation of Europe, in Turkey, Muslims are predominantly Turks, or in the UK, they're, they're Pakistanis. Because of the diversity of the community, and as Muslims coexist with one another, I think that this diversity creates some sort of moderating influence. Um, and so this is basically the composition of the, of the community, which is estimated to be, depending upon the statistic that you consider more reliable, about six million Muslims. Do you think this is the kind of program that you'd want to participate? Is this the first time you participated in one of these programs? And is it something you'd want to do again in the future? I think it's, I think it's a great program. I think it's, I think it's extremely useful for uh, academics to exchange ideas. Because uh, particularly now that as someone who's a researcher at a think tank, um, private, uh, or I should say, funding from nonprofit foundations is not what it once was a few years ago because of the international financial crisis. And so that is seriously limiting the sort of global debate about a lot of important issues. This kind of program even more valuable as, as an avenue for people to come to different parts of the world and to have these kinds of important discussions.